Hey there guys, what's happening? It's Mike here coming to you from the rooftop of my condominium here in Cambodia's capital, Phnom Penh. And as you can see, it's an absolutely glorious day here in the city, the sun's shining. And in today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down the cost of living here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. I'm gonna be sharing my monthly costs, my monthly expenditures, telling you how much I pay for my rent, my daily food costs, my visa, my mobile, by a phone, all of this good stuff that you're going to need to know if you are planning to come to Cambodia and you're wanting to know how much budget are you going to need to live here each and every single month. So without further ado, let's dive straight into today's content. <laughs> All right, so the first major cost that you're gonna to need to consider is rent. Now here in Phnom Penh, there is a huge variety of properties. You can go super, super cheap, or you can go very high end and expensive. For me, I found somewhere kinda of middle ground, you know? I actually found this property originally on Airbnb, but I stayed there for a couple of weeks and then I negotiated a cheaper price with Alex, the landlord. So let me show you around this condominium, show you the facilities, and, and then I'll tell you what it costs. So it's super windy up here on the roof today. I hope you can hear me okay and it's not interfering, but you can see it's got a rooftop pool, not the biggest, but it's enough to cool down in if you wanna splash. In here, we've got a, a basic gym. If you are a fitness freak and you really wanna go for all the machines and things, you're probably gonna to wanna to find one elsewhere, but it's, it's okay for me. I just use it in the morning and in the evening on the treadmill. And then there's another little area around the side that I can show you. Hello. There's another little area around the side here where I'll often do my resistance band on an evening. But as you can see, the views are absolutely great. You can see the whole city from here. So let's go have a look downstairs and I'll show you the actual condo unit that I'm staying in. All right, so here we are, home sweet home. As you can see, a huge window there. The sun comes up right over here. So it's, it's beautiful watching the sun come up about 6.30 on a morning. And it's got everything that I need. It's pretty simple, it's pretty basic, but it's spacious as well. Kitchen area is not huge, but that doesn't bother me too much as <laughs> I don't really cook. Uh, you've got an air fryer there. I've got a big fridge, here is my office space, a sort of storage area there. This area on the top is designed for, for kids to sleep in, apparently. I've never actually been up there. Um, little bathroom here, with a shower and a bath, uh, toilet, you don't need to see in there though, you can imagine. Up the top is the sleeping area, yeah. So, really Asian style, didn't make the bed, sorry for that. <laughs> and then downstairs, we've got the, uh, the living room, and again, beautiful space out the back. This is where I'll have my morning coffee overlooking that. What Alex has put in as well, which I love, he's got green fingers, so we've got an avocado tree there. And we've actually got, we've actually got some tomatoes, some ripe ones as well. You can see there, a couple more ready. Nice having a little bit of nature in the middle of the city. And I've also got a, uh, a washing machine as well, which is useful. 
So there you have it guys, that's a tour of where I'm living at the moment. I'm pretty happy with this condo unit actually, it's a really comfortable space, it's got strong internet so I can get my work done during the day which is important, it's really close to a load of really nice coffee shops and restaurants, I'll take you to have a look at some of those in a minute so you can see for yourself, but in general I'm very happy with this unit and the price as well is an absolute bargain. I'm paying 460 US dollars per month for this unit. Now, that's a pretty good deal. If you look on Airbnb, you won't find that price. However, I negotiated a lowered rate, a reduced rate with the landlord, Alex, and he gave it to me for 460 a month, which is a pretty, pretty good rate. Now, 460 a month includes the water and the internet bill, okay? So those two utilities are included. What's not included is the electricity. Now, Alex charges the same rate as the building does, okay? He takes a meter reading when you go check in and when you leave and charges the, the unit rate the same as the building. Now, last month, my electricity was 50 US dollars. I don't use a great deal actually. As you can see in the day, I've got this window and the door open just over here. So there's a, a nice through wind in the condo. But on the nighttime, I'll put the aircon on for maybe a couple of hours to cool the place down. I'm charging things, I'm using the TV, but 50 US dollars a month isn't too much for electricity really, is it? So that brings our grand total up to 510 US dollars, 460 for the rent and 50 for the electricity. So the next cost you're gonna need is your mobile phone minutes and data. Now I didn't go for a contract, I just went for a pay as you go and that cost me $9. I know, absolutely crazy, right? $9 for an unlimited data plan. I didn't go for call minutes because I don't have anyone's number here in Cambodia and if I'm calling someone, I'll just use WhatsApp, yeah, or sometimes Telegram. So yeah, nine US dollars for mobile phone minutes, which again, isn't gonna break the bank. So that brings our grand total to 519 US dollars. Now, if you're gonna be living in Cambodia, you're obviously gonna need a valid visa. When I traveled here initially from Thailand, I got something called the E-Visa, the tourist visa. That cost me 36 US dollars. However, I extended that a few days ago to, uh, to, for another 30 days. If you wanna see how I did that, there's a link in the description to this video or at the top of this video uh, uh, about a video that I made showing you how I extended my tourist visa. But that extension with an agent cost me 50 US dollars, all right? He dealt with everything for me, didn't have to go into immigration. He basically, took my passport and gave me an extra 30 days. So an extra $50 for that, which brings our grand total to $569. 460 for the rent, 50 for the electricity, nine for the phone and 50 for the visa. So those are your main fixed costs, if you will, yeah? The main fixed costs add up to 569. Now, everything else on top of this is really variable depending on the sort of lifestyle that you live, yeah? For me, I live a fairly simple lifestyle. I go to the gym a couple of times a day upstairs. I work during the day in my condo. I'll go out to some coffee shops and restaurants for lunch and dinner. I don't drink a great deal. I'll have a few beers each week, but you know, beers here are like a dollar, a dollar fifty. I've even seen them for 50 cents in certain places. So my monthly, or my, my weekly costs, if you will, aren't, aren't massive, all right? Now I spend on average $200 per week, all right? And that covers everything, that covers food, tuk-tuks, beer, maybe a couple of massages on an evening, but $200 is gonna cover everything that I need. Sometimes I might spend a little bit more than that, sometimes I might spend a little bit less. So $200 per week, 
four weeks so that's a total of 800 us dollars now just to show you what you can get for about $25 a day. I'm gonna take you round with me a day and kind of show you my daily routine. So right now, what time is it? Right now it's 10 o'clock. I've had my breakfast, I've done a workout, done a little bit of work, and I usually head out for a coffee to a place called Metro Coffee just across the road. And I'll stay there for a couple of hours and often get my lunch there as well. So I'll show you what my daily routine's like and show you the receipts of exactly how much I'm spending each day. So let's head over to the coffee shop and I'll show you this neighborhood at the same time. So here we are out on the street in Toolcook. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I still can't get it. Like I say, there's uh, plenty of coffee shops and restaurants in walking distance of the condo. I don't actually use a motorbike. I, uh, if I want to go a bit further afield, I usually get a tuk-tuk. I've also got a bicycle, which my landlord chucked in with the price of my rent. So anywhere fairly local, I'll jump on the bicycle. This coffee shop's not too bad. The yellow coffee yellow cafe across the road good coffee good food but the reason i don't go in there is because they play absolutely terrible music wallpaper music like jazz bossa nova covers of smells like teen spirit not by nirvana you know that awful just watered down elevator style music <laughs> anyway this place is called metro coffee it's a good spot they always do good food, so let's head in here and get a bite to eat. Hello. No. Can you order? Yes, please. Um, one hot cafe latte, please. And one... Um, you, you hot latte? Hot latte, one. Yeah. And one pad thai. Each one. Pad thai, each one. Chicken pad thai, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So like I say, I usually come here mid morning. I'll bring the laptop with me, stay for a couple of hours, get a coffee or two and have some lunch. Today, I've got some nice pad thai, really, really good food, just like the food in Thailand. So I'm gonna stay here, have my lunch, and do a couple of hours work. So the bill so far for pad thai and a hot cafe latte came to a whopping $7 and six cents. So pretty affordable. That's my lunch budget. So I'm gonna scram this down, do a couple of hours work, and then head back to the condo. I've got a couple of consultation calls this afternoon. I do a consultation business for people looking to start businesses or even move abroad here to Asia. So I've got two consultation calls booked in this afternoon. So I'll eat this and then head back to the condo. Thank you. So two coffees and a pad thai. Nine dollars and seventeen cents. There's one hundred. Okay. Often, if you give people a one hundred dollar, they won't have change. So it looks like she's going to have to grab change somewhere else. Thank you. <laughs> so, as you've just seen. I paid with $100 there. They usually don't have change. Most places you go, if you give them 100, they won't have enough. And I get back a mixture of US dollars and Cambodian real. So I got back, I got the back the right change, but there's 50 in dollars and then the rest is in real. Now it's 4,000 real to $1. So you've got to know your four times table and you've got to be on it if they're giving you mixed change. I know the first couple of days that I got here, I was trying to work it out on my phone and 
it was super, super confusing. So before you do come to Cambodia, guys, make sure you know your four times table if you want to convert the money properly. Right, that's lunch done. It's about half one now, had a couple of coffees. It actually came to nine bucks, something in there, two coffees and a pad thai. I've got calls starting at 2.30 for about two hours. So let's head on back to the condo, get the calls done. And then for dinner tonight, I think I'm gonna show you guys a really nice Indian restaurant that is in the neighborhood. I'll probably take the bicycle along there. So let's head on back to the condo, get my calls done, and then go for some Indian food. So here we are on the streets of Tulkork. It's just gone quarter to six now. I finished my calls at about four o'clock, chilled out for an hour, did 45 minutes on the treadmill in the gym. And now I'm gonna walk to an Indian restaurant that's about 20 minutes this way. I know I said I was gonna take the bike, but it's, uh, well, it's much easier to talk on camera when you're walking and you never know, we might see something interesting along the way. There's some little shops down here. Sometimes people are sitting and having a drink and a party, so, you never know, we might see them. If not, I'll take you to the Indian restaurant and we can get some food there. They do really awesome traditional Indian and Nepali food. So I'll show you around the neighborhood and let's go and get some food. So the food's here. I've got myself a chicken gel frazi, my favorite Indian dish, an absolutely huge naan bread. I probably won't eat all of that. A rice there as well, and a beer. And the total cost of that, to add to the $9 before in the coffee shop, is $8.50. Now I might get another beer on top of that. That'll bring it to what, $10, $1.50 for a beer but like you can see, it's, it's pretty affordable over here, eating food and, and going out and eating out, you know? If you were in the UK or the US, you'd be paying what? $25, $30 for this, I'm guessing. So the quality of life that you can have on $20, $25 a day is very, very good. So with that said, guys, I'm gonna sign off for the day. I'm gonna enjoy a drink. I think you've got me another beer here as well, haven't you? Thank you, boss. I know I said at the beginning of this, I didn't drink much beer, but <laughs> you might believe otherwise. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, as you can see, it's a fairly good life for $1,369 a month. It might be a little bit over that, but if you can budget $1,500 US dollars per month, you're gonna live very, very well in Phnom Penh. You're not gonna have to cook. You can eat out, you can live in a nice condominium. $1,500, you're gonna live a very, very nice life over here. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you wanna connect with me and see some other stuff that I'm doing online, there's a bunch of links in the description to this video, to a Facebook group and some free resources that I'm giving away. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.